Good afternoon. Welcome back to a uh, well, slightly more damp Wellington College than we last left it. It's uh, hopefully not going to dampen spirits, though. Still got three high-quality under-18 Six Nations matches to get our teeth stuck into. Uh, England versus Italy this clash kick off this afternoon gives me a chance to run through what happened this morning Scotland fell short to Ireland in the first game that was 31-5 to the Emerald Green it was then Ireland who took on England who were about to see emerge from the uh, changing rooms that was a 14-5 win for England and then French to come to Scots. And 
uh, worked out relatively nicely for Le Bleu, not so much for the Scots. It was our 44 nil to the French. So there you go, all caught up. And um, now we've got Yazuri against the English to kick off this afternoon's games. Italy will then go on to play Wales, as well as Wales playing France. Just currently waiting for teams to emerge. I'm not surprised they're taking their time. I would. It is torrid here in Berkshire. It really is. Probably getting that picture is really doing it justice, in fairness. It's, um, it's really, really horrible weather. The umbrellas, the, you see the flags flapping in the wind. Those uh, red roses still flying high in that picture. I'm sure if you can see through the English here in support. As out come the Azuri. Donning their uh, bright blue. From the other side of the stand to a slightly bigger roar come the red roses. looking to maintain their perfect record in this festival against Italy. Of course, um, on match day one, we're on the receiving end of a French thrashing. So I'm sure they'll be sympathizing with the Scots. There's um, Millie Hyatt, fly half. Melissa Leboeuf from France will uh, be marshalling proceedings this afternoon. Hyatt, ball in hand, gets us underway. Let's hope for uh, better rugby than we have conditions. It's Italy who started the front foot. That's uh, Spinelli, Desiri Spinelli. Ball from Kupari at scrum half. She starts. Eva Eschel, the other replacement scrum half, who's also on the pitch. She's wearing 10. So moved around for uh, this particular game. And Sara Manini, who started both games at 10 on match day one, has been moved to 12. So there we go. Those are the changes in the back line for Italy. For England, it's... Uh, New halfbacks, Evie Haskell and Emily Cromack started the first game. It's uh, Frank Clark and Millie Hyatt who will start this one. Watch, sink, bind, set, hit, In Italian scrum. Out of the back of that scrum, there was a knock on there from Spinelli, so it would be a. Uh, a scrum to England. This time, Fran Clark will be able to get our hands on the ball. Interesting to see how uh, England are lining up here. Nola, Lauren Nola, the inside centre, standing directly in front of Hyatt, looking to try and potentially give the England fly half a little bit of real estate to work with. I'll get the penalty. I'll take it quickly nonetheless. Here's Hyatt in that pocket of space. Finds Daisy Aspinall who heads around the outside edge and we 
Tries to link up with Connie Clark on this right wing. Didn't work out, but it's the first spark that we've seen of Daisy Aspinall. Pass to Clark. Maybe in the morning would have sat up a bit, a bit better in on the uh, on the terrain, but extra sort of level of water just allowing for the ball to skid and slide a little bit more on the terrain. So much so then. Uh, Kiara Kelly is uh, asking for a towel and a new ball. Free kick. Italy wasting too much time for the referee's liking. So Clark takes it quickly and here's Hanalea Luitui. She's been turned over. And now Italy are the ones on the charge. Kupari. England over it. Goes back the other way. Millie Hyatt just repays the compliment to Italy and manages to collect possession. at the line out though. Collected by those in blue. Seven. Advantage, seven. Advantage as well with the Italians. <laughs> Handling just not sticking for Italy. Finds touch well there. Skill. So Chiara Kelly is getting another opportunity to throw at this line out. Five minutes already gone. Score still at deadlock. It's much better from the Italians. Comes down for Kupari and taken up well by the forwards. Seychelles, that pass is very loose. Fogoran asking a lot of her as well as Nicole Ruggio. Away goes Spinelli down the side and it's Fogoran as well as the roars start to erupt from the stands. Seychelles back to Fogoran who manages just to keep it in hand. No, she doesn't. I spoke too soon. The handling was all a little bit too good to be true for the Italians. Never really had it under their grasp fully. And it was relentless England pressure that denied them the chance to push that a little bit further. There's Italy just keeping the ball alive well. Michelle into Fogaran. You see she was juggling with it then and just built it at the last possible point. So Fran Clark has the chance to feed this scrum. She's put under considerable pressure. Hyatt, out the back door it goes. Balls flung towards Aspinall. Flung forward as well. So it'll be an Italian scrum. Right, snap bang in the middle of the posts. Crutch! 
Giorgia Cupari. Ball in hand. Feet to scrum. Asks for Spinelli to pick it up from the base, which she does. Cupari and now Manini. There was already an advantage coming. Uh, referee is going to consult with her assistant as to whether it was a deliberate knock on or not. Potentially partially lost in translation, but we got there in the end. Our refereeing teams have done so well throughout this whole festival so far. Keeping tempo high, making sure that we are uh, witnessing exciting running rugby. Manini gets away with one there. The ball slipping through the fingers of Emma Gerrard, I think it was, on that touchline. The roars of Italia grow. Chiara Kelly. It's English ball, it is. It is. Penalty to go with it. England snuff it at the line out. And Millie Hyatt will pop this one deep into the Italian half. Can't be kept in. To work from the Gloucester Hartbury player. So Lucy Simpson now with the throw. Italy go early up in the line out. It's collected at the back. I think that's uh, Lucy Sands. Hyatt. There's Lourdes Tui. All right, again, this time goes boot to ball. Across the surface and it's left and she can pick it up. Hyatt away to Connie Clark. Ingenuity at its best and no one will stop her. Clever little kick through by Millie Hyatt initially. Who picks up the pieces and unleashes Clark. England draw first blood. Clever work from Red Roses. Really starting to blossom. Opening the scoring the five and <laughs> ball slippery as anything. Wasn't taken into too much consideration by Giab Mioli. Who let the ball slip through our fingers and really high it just graciously picked it up off the deck. There you go, look, straight through. Left it at a standstill, almost gifted it to Hyatt, who in turn had the wherewithal to find Connie Clark. Yeah, that score. Aspinall with the conversion. Drifts wide, so it's a five point game here. Great work to see that space in behind as well. The type of kick is ideal. And the support running from Connie Clark is also superb. Really good textbook rugby from England playing to the conditions. And Sarah Menini gets us back underway. Lucy Sams. 
reintroduced. Italy were trickling offside there. You could see that from our picture. And Frank Clark is uh, keen on keeping this game flowing. Another 10 metres. Clark can't go quickly, therefore. Passes it to a halfback partner who will nudge this one further into the corner. Tempted to be kept in by uh, Italy, but it's not. It's a good kick from Hyatt. He's had an impressive game so far. Simpson's brought down and here's Lucy Ward. Powerful carry from her, Lui Tui. She decides to get the offload away. Sams, another knock on in the tackle. Multiple knock ons for England to choose. It's an England scrum this time in the uh, Italian 22. off the base of the scrum. Okay. It's been knocked on though, Lucy Sams grabs her headgear in frustration. She knows that that was a prime opportunity. Penalty goes England's way. Clark takes quickly. I think it's been knocked on in all the excitement. It has. England throw away a penalty opportunity. Don't want to set that off. Little stops fans from supporting this England side, not least these uh, pretty nasty conditions. They're still here, shouting loud, if not louder, as are the Italians, who are definitely used to better weather than this. Check's been made, here's Dissery Spinelli, who's made way. I'll try and figure out who's come on in her place. I think it's uh, Emma Tonknon. That will be uh, figured out soon. Free kick to the English. Clark takes it quickly. Hyatt. She gets herself. Big upright carry from Lucy Ward. So much so it's deemed to be a high tackle. There's Finch, the captain. <laughs> Penalty, Clark looks to potentially take it quickly, but I think she might have learnt her lesson from the previous penalty. So instead decides to go for the scrum. This was the collision. Oh, nasty head on heads. Mayone against Lucy Ward. 
And they're going to butt heads again at scrum time. The loose head and tight head, respectively. Sam's sounded in a spot of bother there. It's a nasty injury. Medical team obviously on very quickly. And, uh, there to her attention. It's number 28 who's on for Italy, so that's uh, Margarita Tonoletto. Yeah. English just uh, getting those words of advice. Interesting speaking to um, James Cooper, the England head coach. The, uh, just before the games on Friday, she talks about how England are set on player-led coaching, encouraging players to be making positive and individual decisions on the field and therefore learning from them. Very little coaching input from those higher up in the best way possible, if you see what I mean. It's all about uh, exploring boundaries was the exact phrase. A proper learning curve, and that's exactly what this uh, festival is set out to do, allowing for players to learn as much as possible in as quick amount of time, setting themselves up for senior representation Lucy Sams is making way we of course wish her well looks like uh, we've got a replacement coming on there uh, the Italians in the green red and white yeah that's that uh, I think Sophie McQueen who's come on but she's not wearing her usual scrum cap it's a sad sight. Hopefully it's not too serious and we might get to see Lucy back in action again on Saturday. Fingers crossed. Gets back underway. Scaricelli who made that run and Manini goes boot to ball and Hyatt is back there to collect it. He's got Daisy Aspinall outside up. We'll use Aspinall and now she can get up the gears. Just not enough space to do it in. Lee Evans, that latest run, Lutui, Hyatt across the face, Simpson making yardage. Clark goes digging for it, finds Hyatt in the pocket. She gets the offload away to Tilly Poland. Name we 
yet to mention Tilly Poland. Ball in behind again, causing headaches for the Italians. Lots of pressure, and Aspinall could get onto this. Has she? I think she has. Daisy Aspinall might have got a little bit winded in the process. But pressure applied to Maria Nicole Ruggio. And she could not collect the ball. That's been all the beneficiary. Once again, it's the boot of Millie Hyatt, which unlocks the key. Unlocks the door, in fact, and this is not one that Ruggio will want to watch back again. You can see where Aspinall may have had the wind taken out of it. Heap of Italian. So, Natalie Evans, I think, who will take the conversion. It's a great one as well. It's just shy. So it's a 10 point game. That was that initial buzz something run for Tilly Poland. He's only had one England camp. That came in March, so she's really bolted into the team, Poland. And her forward momentum allowed for England to get this score. What a score it is. Aspinall, that's really well taken. So England once again with a 10-point lead. Oh, another big collision. This time Lucy Ward involved. Fran Clark is caught up by Margarita Tonelotto. Penalty taken. Clark goes the 10 metres, almost looking for support. Hyatt will provide that. Ball kept alive. Lots of Italian shirts in uh, the grouped places here. If England can get it outside, then could be cooking, though. They won't for now. Instead, I think Hyatt will aim for the corner here. A strong kicking game. Both her and Ella Cromack can uh, can uh, judge kicks extremely well. Certainly something which England benefit from. Lutui tries to pounce on it higher. It's the ball back. Here's Clark. She's trying to get out of that outside edge, but Fogaran's got her wrapped up. Clark hit hard, as was Emma Gerrard. Cagnotto thought that she was over the ball, and she was. Tolelotto. Pari goes back the other way. It's for Garin. Kupari again, and oh, that final pass towards Chichati would have been ideal. Instead, it's with Ishel. Picked up by Manini. Good vision from her. Kupari's got it. Penalty, I think, will be given. Deliberate knock on. Kupari takes it quickly. Gets up into the England 22. Fogaran. There's options outside if they can get there. That's Alonzi. Michelle lies over it. Instead, it's Fogaran who takes the ball and 
utilises May on it. Strong runners in the midfield for Italy. England will have to be careful. Cherley. And they've snuck through. It is Kelly. Chiara Kelly gets over. And Italy are right back into things here. Clever stuff from Kelly here. Hits the ground. Releases the ball and just gets back up again. Incredible rugby knowledge and wherewithal to do so. And the Italians are up and raving. All important as well, the kick in front of the post. So now with... 10 minutes left. You've got to say that Manini has a strong chance of slotting this one. Converted well by Manini, so that's seven points. The first seven points that Italy have been able to celebrate. So no wonder the cheers are so loud. Their first score in 95 minutes of rugby across the two match days. Things just not clicking for England. The uh, kick didn't go 10. Italy with this scrum, three point game. Tysis affair we've had so far today at this time. Leaves us with an exciting finish, that's for sure. Penalty goes England's way. How crucial could that be? Taken by Hyatt. High challenge, I think it was, on Louis Tui. Hyatt goes down the blind side. Another high challenge as well, I think. It's two in a row. Are getting called over. This is a yellow card to Richel. Ivo Richel is out of this fixture for now. High challenge. So Italy down a player. How fruitful could this be for England? England with the knock-on advantage. Lucy Ward takes it up, has lost possession. Knock-on in the tackle. It's the power of Louis Tui. That was the first challenge. I think it was the second one which meant that Eva Richel is now spending time in the bin.
Fran Clark again to feed this scrum. And Alea Louis Tui at the back of this scrum is almost licking her lips. She knows that 10 channel is currently unoccupied for Italy, so potentially they can break through the backfield. Instead, it's the work of Nola that get them there. Hyatt goes to the air. Again, this could work out for England. Connie Clark, how's your footballing skills? They're pretty good. In fact, they're superb. Connie Clark, Lioness-esque. Controls the ball ever so well. Again, I sound like a broken record, but Millie Hyatt's boot unlocking defences. Ball slipping through the grass, and have a look at this. One touch, two touch, one more off the shin. Under pressure. So good from Connie Clark. Try. Try has been given. Obviously, the referees don't have the luxury of TMO. I wonder if we can. Ooh. You give one or two more checks at that, and potentially we might be asking questions. But for now, it's a try. We can keep it at that. Aspinall attempts the conversion. It's wide. But England give themselves more breathing room. Really Let's hard to get. Go, go, go! Oh! Ooh, let's, we'll be optimistic and say and say that it had enough downward pressure. The cynical rugby enthusiasts among us may ask more questions, but for now we'll celebrate the pure footballing skill of Connie Clark. She's strong, a brace from her this afternoon. England's perfect record looks like it may very well stay intact. Behind her, but she recovers well. And away goes Natalie Evans, and she's got some gas to spare. And women outside are Aspinall going up the gears. Daisy Aspinall for the corner. Stopped superbly by the Italians and stripped as well. Somehow the Azuri get out of jail, and they could go themselves. Bogodan. Oh, Manini spilt it. Took her eye off the ball for a second. All gone backwards though. No. Knock on. So it will be a scrum to England. But what a break that was from the Red Roses. Evans, Aspinall, both doing ever so well and getting oh so close. Not close enough. The, uh, the deficit on the field reduced. Back to equilibrium. Eva Rochelle returns from her time in the bin. But she returns to some pretty hardcore defensive duty. Clark. Louis Tui is at the back of that scrum, and no, it ends up Italian way. 
And Michelle gets herself right back involved in things. And meets with Connie Clark. Creates some impact. It was Natalie Evans, in fact, I think, who made that initial hit. She stayed down. She's shaking out her arm, potentially something up with her shoulder. This was some collision between Evans and his shell. Have a look at this. Oof, that is textbook. I wonder your shoulder hurt after that. The Italians not rolling over. Good offloading skill as well, and they're away now. Up towards the England half. There's the try scorer, Celli. Their only try scorer across their three games that they've played so far. Fogarant. I think Richardson has got her hands over the ball there for England. She has, and therefore Hyatt can assess the options out wide. One of them is her captain, Lucy Finch. Ball available for Louis Tui. <laughs> Stopping play. Referee's seen something she doesn't like. Calling over the two captains. It's Aspinall who's actually skippering the side at the moment. Oh, we just lost communications at the most ideal time. Well, I'll have to have a think about what that telling off was all about. Either way, it's an Italian ball now. Comes off the shins of the Azzurri. So they're still allowed to keep possession. England thought that they were over the ball. They weren't. Clock's in the red, so doubt the Italians can make much more of an impact when it comes to the result. But another score could certainly lift spirits ahead of their game against Wales later on. Trip though by England. Finch. There's Hyatt. Ball knocked on. That will see us. Into the full time whistle. England hold on. The work of player in your picture there briefly Millie Hyatt the real key her kicking game the difference it's two for Connie Clark Daisy Aspinall also got herself on the score sheet an improved performance for the Italians they even got a try Chiara Celli got the first score of the tournament So, a strong performance from Italy, but not enough to beat the formidable Red Roses. They contain their perfect form in this championship ahead of their crucial clash against France on Saturday. That will certainly not be one to miss. The French are also in action this afternoon. They're up against Wales. The final score here in this game, England under 18 is 15, Italy under 18 is 7. England, though, despite being pushed close today, have played for one more in this tournament so far. Huge test then on Saturday afternoon against France in a full 70 minute match. Italy, who do seem to be growing into this tournament, still have a game to come this afternoon. Five o'clock, Italy take on Wales. That could be quite a contest. Before that, though, next up in about 15 minutes' time, Wales take on France. 